And here is the Writer's Almanac for Wednesday. It's the 2nd of March, 2022. The novelist John Irving, born on this day in Exeter, New Hampshire, 1942, whose first big successful novel was The World According to Garp, came out in 1978. It's the birthday of the man who said it's fun to have fun, but you have to know how. And that was Theodore Geisel, better known as Dr. Seuss, born Springfield, Massachusetts, 1904. The author of Horton Hears a Who, One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish, Green Eggs and Ham, 60 children's books in all. He was the grandson of German immigrants. He was a lifelong Lutheran, graduated from Dartmouth, dropped out of Oxford. His mother was six feet tall, weighed 200 pounds. She was a competitive platform high diver. His father inherited a brewery a month before Prohibition began. Eventually, he became a zookeeper and brought young Theodore with him to work. At Dartmouth, Geisel majored in English. He wrote for the campus humor magazine. One night, he was caught drinking gin, and the Dartmouth administration disciplined him by making him resign from all of his extracurricular activities, including the humor magazine. He was the editor-in-chief. And from then on, he wrote for the magazine under a pen name. He used his mother's maiden name, Seuss, which was pronounced Seuss, the way it would be said in Germany. But people kept mispronouncing it Seuss, and eventually Dr. Seuss embraced the mispronunciation. His first children's book was in 1937, And to Think That I Saw It on Mulberry Street. He wrote that book and much of the rest of his life's work in rhyming anapestic meter, also called trisyllabic meter, which he found very alluring, very catchy, the meter that goes da-da-dum, 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 da-da-dum. And today the great yurtle, that marvelous he, is king of the mud that is all he can see. Dr. Seuss came along at a time when people were getting tired of the old Dick and Jane reading books for children. His publisher at Random House said, write me a story that first graders can't put down. And they gave him a short list of words that first graders should know. He spent nine months composing The Cat and the Hat, which uses just 220 different words. It's 1,700 words long. Dr. Seuss said writing for children is murder. Every word has to count. But within five years of its publication, The Cat in the Hat had sold a million copies. And it's the birthday of Sholem Aleichem, born in Ukraine, 1859, wrote in Yiddish, gave us the character Tevya the Milkman, whose stories inspired the musical Fiddler on the Roof. Sholem Aleichem, who said, Life is a dream for the wise, a game for the fool, a comedy for the rich, a tragedy for the poor. Here's a poem for today by Lewis Jenkins, entitled Fishing Below the Dam. On summer evenings, the working men gather to fish in the swift water below the dam. They sit on the rocks and are silent for the most part, looking into the water and casting again and again. Lines tangle, tackle is lost, and a fisherman curses to himself. No one notices. It is simply a part of the routine, like the backs of their wives in bed at night or short words to the children in the morning. Only the water holds their attention, crashing through the spillway with enough force behind it to break a man's back, and the undertow could take you as easily as a bit of fish line and toss you ashore miles downstream. The men shout to be heard above the roar of the water. Any luck? Now I just got here. A poem by Lewis Jenkins, Fishing Below the Dam, from Before You Know It, published by Will-O-The-Wisp Books, and used by permission here on the Writer's Almanac. Be well, do good work, and keep in touch.